happy Thursday. Uh, super early. <laughs> I woke up, got my workout in, got myself ready, responded to some emails, and I've got about 30 minutes before I have to head out to work. I'm actually gonna make myself a smoothie really quick. I love these Daily Harvest smoothies. And the mint and cacao one tastes like mint chocolate chip. Mmm, smells good. You can see all that delicious veg. You either add water or non-dairy milk or milk if you're choosing. I just have a little almond milk here. I have to go get my little blade. Yeah, it comes out really thick, tastes so good. And then you just pour it back into the little cup. I was kind of conservative on the liquid because I like mine thick, but you could add a little bit more liquid if you want it more smoothie-ish. But yeah, you just pop the lid on and where'd my straw go? Got my little glass straw here. Be careful not to hurt yourself with that. But yeah, so good. That's really good. Really good for dessert. Just like a shamrock shake only. Not deadly. <laughs> Much healthier for you. Yeah, the ingredients, banana, spinach, cacao, cashew, peppermint, chlorella, and what's the last one on there? Vanilla bean. Nothing funky. But I made this with almond milk. You guys, I'm still loving. Yeah, I made it with the almond milk as suggested. But I make my own almond milk with my soy bella. The soy bella is amazing. I've had it now for about a year and I use it once a week to make uh, almond milk. You can also make any kind, you make any kind of nut milk, but you can make uh, soy milk as well and rice milk. Haven't tried that. And I believe you can also make oat milk. So yeah, all of your non-dairy milk needs. All right, before I head out, I'm gonna just show you a little outfit of the day. This top is from Eclipse, UPS, it's Eclipse Sunwear, I think it's called, but I've been loving these tops. You can get a variety of tops like this from Amazon. They're pretty inexpensive. I obviously love them because they have the little hand protection, but this one has a little hoodie on it. And the reason I like it, it's spring here and it alternates every hour between boiling hot, cool, and wet. And so this is perfect because it's like moisture wicking. It gives me um, sun, sun protection. It protects my upper chest really well. You know, I can pull it over my head if I need to, and it'll cover my ears, my scalp. And it's super lightweight, and it actually looks kind of cute for everyday wear. It doesn't look like, you know, a lot of, I mean, I'm sorry, like a lot of the UPF 50 kind of clothing can be sort of dorky. I, I just feel like these are pretty basic. I don't know if they still have this color, but I'll try and find it. Uh, but I'll link some similar ones down below that you can get on Amazon. And then I just have my little Alex and Ani bracelets. I love these. I have an A, Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, an A, I have a little pine cone. And where's my pineapple? Yeah, there's my pineapple. I love these. The pants are from Nordstrom. They're the brand Caslon, and they're like little cargo pants. I don't know if they still have these on their website. I'll look, and if so, I'll list them down below. But I love these pants. I bought them about a year ago, and they look brand new. I wear them all the time. So I think I'm gonna order some more pants by Caslon. You know, once you know your size in a certain brand and that it fits well, it's always good to go back to. So I think I might actually order some more. I'm just wearing a little white tank underneath. Um, and then my headband, I'm really loving these headbands. They came in a three pack from Amazon um, and they've got these cute little bees on them. Let's see if you guys can see. Yeah, I'm really loving them. They're really cute, they have a little knot. They're super comfortable too. Um, they came in a pack, one's like black, one's navy, and then the other's like light pink, really cute. So yeah, oh no, I'm not gonna wear my slippers out. I have a little pair of flats that I'm gonna wear. But yeah, oh, and I also have my necklace from Anna Luisa, a little pearl necklace. I don't know if this is still available on their site, but, but I'm gonna head out to work now and I will check in with you guys a little later when I go run errands. 
Well, hey guys, what's up? It is late afternoon and I'm headed out to run errands per usual on Thursday. I mentioned this morning that I um, am using the Dermatology Universal Tint sunscreen. I'm back on that. Um, I recently finished up the untinted and then I was using a variety of other sunscreens, which I finished up. You'll see in my sunscreen empties. But anyways, I um, wanted to address a common question or set of questions or concerns that I have been getting a lot lately about how um, to layer moisturizers and sunscreen, etc. And like, what's the best way to do that? And along that line, like, can you put sunscreen on damp skin? So, you know, the hard and fast rules and the best practices for A, putting on a moisturizer is to apply it onto damp skin. Does that mean you can't you know, apply it onto dry skin? No. It just means that the best way to make sure that you're moisturizing your skin is when you cleanse and the skin is damp, put the moisturizer on then. That's when it needs it the most and that's when the moisturizer is gonna work the best. Now, sunscreen has to be applied to a clean, dry face. To, in order, the reason it has to be dry is that um, if there's any water or anything or whatnot, it can interfere with how the film forming agents set up on your skin and make the um, product not set up properly and then you not have good sun protection. So uh, here in comes this kind of nuance that I'm going to get to and it will probably, hopefully it will, will clarify things. Sunscreens by themselves, sunscreens are in vehicles that are moisturizing. But by nature of the way that you put them on, you're not really always capitalizing on that part of the vehicle. And so a lot of people want to put on a moisturizer first. But here's the thing. Uh, say you uh, are like me and you don't wash your face in the morning. When you put sunscreen on, it's just as though you were putting on a moisturizer. That's about as good. The moisturizing properties of the sunscreen they're gonna work just as well as any other moisturizer would applying it to dry skin. I mean, the best you have is a little bit of extra uh, protection from transepidermal water loss, etc. So it's not like, like you can't put it on at that point. Um, and that's how I do it. I don't wash my face in the morning, so there's no need for me to go through this. Well, I've just cleansed, so I need to put the moisturizer on right away. But if you are somebody who washes your face in the morning, and the skin is damp and like I just said, that's the best time to put on a moisturizer. Go ahead and put your sunscreen on to the damp skin. And here is the thing that you have to do. Put it on to the damp skin and pretend in your head that you're putting on your moisturizer. Let it dry fully. And then once your face is dry, put on another layer. That is, that way, the second layer, you're thinking in your mind, I'm putting on my sunscreen. And here's my point for doing this. The first layer that you put on is probably not, is, is obviously the filters are not gonna set up properly to get you that sun protection, but you're gonna get some sprinkled on there and you're gonna get the moisturizing properties of the sunscreen to reduce transepidermal water loss from the cleansing. Then you allow it to dry and you really focus on the filter setting up with the second application. This is nice for a variety of reasons. A, you're doing some layers, so whatever sunscreen filters manage to set up on the first application, you put on another application, that kind of avoids skip areas. And then two, it gets rid of this ambiguity with how different products interfere with, might interfere with how the filter's set up. So for example, if you put on a moisturizer or serum or whatever, and even if you let it dry and then you put your sunscreen on, nobody really knows how that first product might interfere with how your second product, your sunscreen, sets up. This is something that I don't know the answer to and I always worry about. I worry about it with makeup that you, you know, when people who wear a full face of makeup, I worry about how that interferes with the sunscreen setting up. Um, I, I honestly don't know the answer to it and, uh, and don't go online and Google it because you won't find the correct answer. The correct answer has to be determined by a study that looks at at least doing MED testing, um, 
with different products versus no products. That's what needs to be done, and it hasn't been done. So in other words, don't go Googling looking for the answer because you'll find some Reddit forum where people have made something up and they're just touting it as truth. And you know, that, I, that's what I hate about the internet. It just propagates misinformation. Uh, there's really not enough information or knowledge basis on how different products interact with other products. And in the case of sunscreen, how they interfere with the filter setting up. So my my rationale between by by um, ignoring the don't put sunscreen on damp skin thing is, well, you're using it at that point as a moisturizer, basically. Does that make sense? Plus, the other advantage of doing it that way is that you, you're just using one product. Sunscreen, that's your moisturizer, and the product, that's your sunscreen, versus two products. So that minimizes the number of things that you're using and it also, uh, and by minimizing the number of things that you're using, it lowers the risk of, of contact dermatitis. And if contact dermatitis does develop, then you're like, well, I've been using this sunscreen, that's all I've been using. Good chance, there's a chance that there's something in this that I'm allergic to. So it just makes, it just makes things easier when you simplify and reduce the number of products that you use. And sunscreen is probably one of the most, is the most important product that you use, period. Like all this other garbage, serums, etc. It's just like, no, like that doesn't matter. It's the sun protection that matters because sun is really what ages your skin, damages your skin and contributes to all, all, you know, all skin diseases are aggravated at least to some extent by sun exposure. I shouldn't say that. Some, some, sun, some diseases actually uh, will be improved by sun exposure just because it is immunosuppressive. But that immunosuppression uh, is is reducing your immune surveillance for tumor surveillance. So it puts you at risk for can uh, skin cancer formation. Um, so yeah, I hope that addresses your questions about layering moisturizers and, and sunscreen. In the case of moisturizers, it's nice to just use the sunscreen product as that. Now there are other products, however, that are nice and that they might camouflage green tint. They're moisturizers that, that have a green tint that camouflages redness. And you might want to use, if you have rosacea, you might want to use that first thing in the morning to your damp skin to take advantage of that uh, green tint uh, as a cosmetic camouflage to your redness. But I honestly can't tell you with any like 100% guarantee that the sunscreen that you then put over that is going to set up properly. I believe it should but I don't have studies to show that. I don't have studies showing how the MED is affected by other app, other products. Um, I wish I wish they had we had that kind of stuff, but we don't. So yes, Houstonians, it's the rodeo time. We've been having a lot of traffic related to that. You know, as a vegan, I obviously don't go to the rodeo, but so when I get invited, I I don't know how I I kind of have a hard time dancing around the invitation because I don't want to be rude to people like um, you know I don't ever want to when people ask me about veganism I'm more than happy to talk about it but I don't really like force my veganism on other people I'm pretty soft-spoken about it simply because for the longest time like probably one of the rate limiting steps for me considering going vegan was vegans <laughs> and being pushy yeah, but you know, here in Houston, there is a large vegan community. So if you're moving here and you do follow veganism or you know plant-based diet, don't be scared. Um, I've had no issues. People here are very nice, and even though the meat industry is really big here, I don't find that I ever get any pushback for being vegan. And I find that pretty much everywhere that I go, there are at least a lot of vegetarians and. You know one or two vegans so I don't feel isolated here but yeah um, there is a lot of love for me here pothole I gotta warn you guys we're here at the club Ooh, Ferraris and Jaguars switching four lanes. 
Money ain't a thing. <laughs> Little Costco bling bling. I'm a jewelry fanatic. Oh, that's cute, that ring. Costco's got some nice bling, you guys. Malia not bangle. Little heart's cute too. Oh, update, I got my contact lenses in, TG. Except I accidentally ordered the AccuView Oasis ones. They tend to dry out a little faster than, I can't remember the other brand that I was wearing. Um, so last weekend I actually picked up two of these for my drawers and I've really been pretty happy with them. They're not perfect, but they've really made my uh, sock and underwear drawers much more together. All right, from Costco this week, I got my frozen rice cauliflower, of course, and some bananas, what's my name? And a little boy romaine there. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? This is like a, a sonnet here of produce. I also got the organic white mushrooms from Monterey. These are so good. I got my organic Brussels sprouts. Uh, I got this thing of Driscoll's blueberries from Costco. My mom has been getting these and they're really good. Uh, from Crow Hair, I got some carrots <laughs> from the uh, bulk bin. I also got some Opo squash. These are behemoths there. Yeah, they haven't had these in a while. They uh, kind of are like zucchini or yellow squash, but they are a lot firmer. So I find that they withstand my slow cooker perfectly. You know, if you put chopped up zucchini or yellow squash in the slow cooker, it just turns to mush. Like, I don't know, and I can't stand steamed, uh, steamed zucchini or steamed yellow squash. I prefer it raw or to have a little bit of crunch or to be al dente. But this is actually just ends up uh, just perfect in the slow cooker. Also got some clementinas. These are a steal, you guys. They're like $3.99 for this massive five pound bag at uh, Costco, really good deal. I got a small bag of spinach from, uh, from Crow Hair. Yeah. I also got two cantaloupes from uh, Costco. Love those bad boys. These are really good in the food dehydrator, by the way. Speaking of my food dehydrator, I got a medley of different apples because I, um, I actually was hoping Costco would have those bare apple chips and they are out of them. They always have them. And then, then I go in there and I want to get them and they are out of them. Anyways, I thought I would try making my own dehydrated apple chips, but let's be honest, I'll probably just end up eating these because I love apples. I got a, what is this, a Cosmic Crisp and then some, what are these, Fuji's and then some very, very green, green apples. I got an onion. Two bags of radishes, my boy Savoy. And then at Costco, I got this Tolerant Pasta. I think this is a horrible name for a brand, to be honest with you. <laughs> it just sounds like, I don't know. It, it, it makes me think of intolerant, even though it's tolerant. I don't, it, it just seems like, I don't know. It's, it's me, I, I don't know what it is. I don't, I feel like this is a terrible name. Anyways, this is really good, despite the name. It is a little better, in my opinion, than bonza. The only ingredient is a lentil flour. And I think bonza has xanthan gum in it, which I'm fine with, but I think some people find that it's tough on their digestion. Anyways, this uh, is just lentil flour, and it's really good. So I got some of that. Then at Cohair, I got my Smart Sweets. I had a coupon, and this was on Ibotta, if you bought two. So I decided to try the, I've never tried the little um, Sour Patch Kids one. Something tells me I'm not gonna like these as much as the Smarty Sweet Sweet Fish, because I was never like a huge Sour Patch Kids fan. Um, but we'll give these a gozy. I got two cans of no salt added tomato sauce. I don't know what's going on with me in this pseudo language. I'm putting out there. I got a massive tub of PB2 powdered peanut butter. I've really been enjoying this in, uh, I've been making baked oatmeal bars that are really good. That's why I wanted those bare apple chips because I like putting those in the, in the oat bars, but they were out of them. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I got some powdered peanut butter for that. And then I just had my uh, dental cleaning. I go twice a year as you should. 
And I was getting the thumbs up gold star on my flossing habits. I floss twice a day and brush twice a day. And the dental hygienist was just stroking my ego left and right. So yeah, yeah, I was like, you know, I eat a lot of veggies and they get stuck in my teeth. So I've really got to be diligent on the flossing. And she's like, well, veggie chewing is actually very good for your teeth and it shows. So thanks, dental hygienist friend. Anyways, these were a bit of an impulse, but they got me because they were cute. These are some command hooks that are kind of blingy. I, when I come in, I always like struggle to find a place to set my bag. And I thought these were nice. I think I might try and attach them to my desk, to the side of my desk since I've moved my desk over. So I thought that would look good. So yeah, that is everything that I got at Crow Hair and Costco this week. I'm gonna put all this away. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.